Hi everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining us today here at the DTI National Food Fair. I'm honored to be one of the speakers that will um, talk to you today, hopefully to help you a little bit more with your business. Um, I first off wanted to start by commending all of you. You know, I, I know it's been a very rough time right now with the pandemic happening. So I really just commend all of you for soldiering on and for um, continuing work, continuing to work through, you know, all these tough times that are happening right now. Um, so hopefully what I will teach you today will help you out a little bit more with what you're doing. Um, so, okay, I will just share my screen. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about creating meaningful connections in a socially distant era. So content creation for the new normal with me, um, Sofia Kyoge, or some of you might know me online as Social Media Soph. So this is what we'll be going through for our talk today. Um, first, we're, I'm going to be talking about where social media is now in the new norm. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about how to get people to follow or how to create genuine connections through content. Next, we'll talk about how to get their attention, aka how to stop the scroll. Um, next, we'll be talking about how to get them to love. So the extra step that you need to be taking in order to connect with your audience. And finally, I'll be taking you through my secret sauce to content strategy. Um, and if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the chat box. So first, I would like to start with a little bit of an icebreaker, just a quick question. Um, I'd like you to share with me one or two words on how you feel about social media. So it doesn't have to be anything deep, like anything off the top of your head. Um, just type it in the chat box. I just want to kind of gauge where you guys are when it comes to social media. You know, I know it can be super intimidating and it can be super chaotic at times if you're not really sure how to navigate through it. Um, so yeah, I just want to see how you guys are feeling. It can be positive, it can be negative. I'll give you guys a few seconds to answer in the chat box. But yeah, no judgment here. If you hate social media or if you love it, no judgment at all. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and just type them in again instinctively. Don't really think about it too much. Just type them in again. Social media can be very confusing. Um, I know when I just started out, I was pretty overwhelmed and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but you know, practice makes perfect. So if you just keep on working on it then and keep on trying to learn about it also because it's constantly evolving, then it'll be less scary. Okay, thank you everyone for sharing. So first we're gonna start with where social media is now. So these numbers are super, super important to take note of. Um, and it's no question that there has been a significant increase in online and digital activities. So here are some amazing statistics from the past few years. So there are 4.48 social media users, 4.48 billion social media users worldwide. Um, there are 7.91 million users just in the Philippines. So wow, amazing potential. Um, the Philippines or, or Filipinos rather use social media on an average of four hours and 15 minutes per day. So that's actually the greatest number of hours in the entire world. So Filipinos are very active on social media. Actually, we are the most active in the entire world. 80% of users use social media to decide whether to buy something or not. So if someone's going to decide if they want to purchase a product or service, they check out social media first whether to decide whether or not they actually do want to go through with that purchase. So super powerful. And finally, 64.5% 
of the Philippine population aged 18 and above are on social media. So that's a huge number. A, a lot of people aged 18 above of legal age are on social media. So that's 64.5%. So conversations on social media are taking center stage in a socially distant world. You know, we're not together. So we have to find another way to connect with each other, which means that people are spending more and more time online than ever and are consuming more too. But the problem with this is that it may lead users to content to have content fatigue. The solution is to create content that people actually want to see, that people actually connect with, that people actually um, will stop to look at. And how, you, how will we do this? Well, that's why we're here. <laughs> so first, we're going to start to get them to follow how to create genuine connections through content. The first and most, well, most important step is to create an action plan. You have to really be organized about social media because otherwise it will be super overwhelming you're going to just start posting for the sake of posting and we don't want that we want everything that we post to have an objective so create an action plan by identifying what's missing online so look at who your competitors are look at what they're doing look at what they're lacking and improve on it you know if you see like for example a post um, on your competitors and you can you can say hey like I think there's a way that we can improve this messaging or improve what they're saying then improve on what they're doing because you have to really showcase that you're the better option than your competitors and also identify who your audience is and what they value it's very very important to um, be knowledgeable on your about your audience um, because otherwise you're just going to be talking to um no one because if you're talking to everyone you're talking to no one you're just going to be like shouting random things to random people um but if you have your audience in mind then you can create messaging like you're speaking directly to them like you're talking to them like you have them there and you're talking to them so that's the type of messaging that you have like tailor made for your audience so this is how you can create an action plan start with your objectives and then your campaigns, and then your schedule, and then your posts. So objectives are um, essentially what you want to um, accomplish with each campaign. So do you want to raise more awareness? Do you want to raise your conversion rate? Um, do you want to raise your engagement, stuff like that? Um, so these are objectives. And then from your objectives, that's how you create your campaigns. So it's important that every single campaign has an objective so you can actually know if it's working, you can track it, you can know what um, key performance indicators you need to track. And then when you set your campaigns, you set a schedule. So this is a very important step, but it's often overlooked. Um, the schedule of your campaign should be consistent. So you don't have to post every single day. I, I'm a firm believer that, um, let's say, for example, on Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, you don't have to post every single day. But if you have a schedule, you have to stick to it. So if you're posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then stick to that schedule. If you're posting Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or just Tuesday, Thursday, stick to that schedule also. Um, and then if you set like a time for your post, then make sure you adjust it also based on your insights so always look at your insights and adjust from there and then finally the posts so you can create your posts based on the schedule and the campaigns since you have already that backbone of the objectives and the campaigns that's where you can derive your posts from so it will be a lot more streamlined a lot more organized and not as chaotic and finally, use all the mediums possible. When I say this, I don't mean you have to be on every single social media platform. What I simply mean is that you, if you are on that platform, then use all the features of that platform possible. Because the thing is with these platforms is they award you if you use all the features, especially the features that aren't most commonly used. So let's say you're in, in, on Instagram then you should be posting static posts, videos, IGTVs, you should be doing IG live stories, all of that. Use all the fe features possible on each platform. Again, you don't have to be on every single platform, but 
on the platforms that you but for the platforms that you are on make sure that you're really maximizing those so on social media you should really be prioritizing conversations over conversions especially right now you know we're so socially distant we're going through some hard times so it's very very important to um, really nurture your audience by creating conversations with them um, right now social media should really be used for building brand awareness and re brand recall rather than just constantly promoting constantly pushing for sales um, you have to make yourself known to the right audience rather than, again, pushing for sales, pushing for promos, um, because you have to reach your audience before you can actually um, sell to them. You have to nurture your audience. You have to make your audience get to know you before you actually um, ask them to buy from you. So make sure that you're really nurturing that right relationship and focusing on that relationship. And what does this mean? It means that it's not about you. It's about your audience. It's about what they want. It's about what they need. Again, you are in a relationship with your audience, so you have to make sure that you get to know them first. You have to nurture that relationship, like an actual relationship, you know. Um, if you have a friendship or a significant other, you have to constantly nurture that relationship. You can't just like leave it be and then ask them to do something every once in a while no you have to nurture that relationship um and you have to establish trust through delivering value um so ask them questions help solve their problems with helpful tips um and show your true selves and what your brands are you have to show your audience that they can depend on you and you have to establish this trust through delivering value. So you have to follow the 80-20 method. So essentially what the 80-20 method is, is that you have to make sure that the content you're creating is 80% educational, entertaining, and inspiring, and 20% promotional. So promotions are a very small part of the type of content that you should be creating. You have to be delivering give, 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 give before you take. And you have to be true to who your brand is because fakeness creates superficial relationships. So again, when you're co when you're communicating with your audience, you have to be very authentic, um, showcase your brand values as much as possible. Um, I'm sure all of us have had our fair share of toxic relationships, and we we don't want that to happen with our audiences. We want real, genuine relationships with our audiences. So the keys to this are authenticity being understanding of your audience and providing a sense of community with your audience so you want to make them a part of your brand um, again you're not talking at them you're talking with them so make them feel like they're actually a part of their brand your brand make them feel like you know you're really doing this for them make them feel like you care about them because you do that's why you're doing this because you want to provide a service that you think would be helpful to them. So make sure you're really emphasizing that. Now, how do you get their attention? So the truth of the matter is, um, people are on social media to build and maintain relationships. Like for example, if they follow a friend, that means that they want to keep up with that friend's life. And every time that friend posts, the friend is showing more and more of their life to their followers and it's the same with businesses or brands but it's even harder because you want that relationship with your audience um where you know you they want to keep up with you but you have to create those connections from scratch um so content marketing is so important if you want if you want your business to thrive um so now we're going to talk about how to stop the scroll I'm sure you already know this, um, but just like in relationships, quality trumps quantity all the way, both in audiences and in content. So rather than creating more content, create content that's relatable, valuable, and shareable. And rather than aiming for more followers, aim for the right followers. You, I'm sure you've all heard of those vanity metrics and stuff like that. So it's not about 
quantity it's about the quality of the audience that you have the quality of the content that you're providing so audiences create more stories than companies themselves um, so connect with them by gratifying them make them love uh, or think or inspire them create an experience with emotions and that's how you can connect with them um, but how can you get them to actually read what you're saying? Um, the trick is to have what I like to call a sexy hook. So start with something that will make your followers think, hey, I have to read this. This is totally for me. So a sexy hook isn't just a blog title or a generic summary, you know, not just like five ways to... Um, lose weight or something like that that's terrible but <laughs> again my point not it shouldn't be like that um, it should be a headline that triggers emotions and encourages your audience to keep reading it's a thought-provoking question or statement here are some examples okay so this is an example from Nashoba she's a business coach I'm just going to be really frank for a moment. Hear me out, dot, dot, dot. So you get intrigued, you know, you want to keep reading. Um, one of the biggest game changers was when I learned this, dot, dot, dot. Again, you get intrigued, so you'll want to keep reading. Keep still struggling with hashtags. Try this, dot, dot, dot. Hashtags are very important, worth using for your... And then want to gain more IG followers, do this. So you can actually implement this also for your product-based businesses. Um, you know, even me, when I have product based clients, um, I do type posts like this, not delivering a lot of value, delivering a lot of ways that you can connect with your audiences. Um, so for example, you can be like, um, are you struggling to get up in the morning? Um, here are some coffee recipes that might help you or something like that. Um, so try your best to um humanize your brand as much as possible because people don't want to be talking to a brick wall so it's very important to humanize your brand so next get them to love so this is the extra step that you need to be taking to connect with your audience Again, like I said, I'm repeating this because it's very, 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 very important. <laughs> this is how you maintain the relationship. Um, so you have to prioritize conversations, conversations, conversations. You know, just because you're a product-based business, again, doesn't mean that you have to just be a product-based business. There are humans behind your business. There are people behind your business. And there are people that other people will relate to when it comes to your business. Um, so really showcase like if you talk about why you built your business, for example, um, I had this client um, that she had a, a like a mommy and baby clothing store. And the reason why she built that was because her husband passed away um, and she had to, you know, kind of build a life on her own. She had to build she had to earn on her own. Um, and it's not that you're posting that to ask for pity. No, it's not that. You're posting that because there might be someone who resonates with your story. There might be someone who will relate to that story. Um, and, you know, they'll know that they're not alone. They'll, they'll know that there's this community, the community that you actually have. Um, that will benefit them, that will help them. So connecting with your audience is super important. Don't underestimate humanizing your brand. Don't underestimate sharing your brand story. Um, it can be so easy to get caught up in just promoting products, promoting products. But that's not the objective here. Um, the objective here is to showcase that you're trying to help the person and a way that you can showcase that you're trying to help the person is by sharing your story and sharing that, you know, you've been there too and that's why you created this business. Um, so social media, it really isn't a one-way street but a two-way tango. 
So you have to have more conversations, less announcements. Um, I get, I, I've seen a lot of product-based businesses that, um, I mean, if it works for them, if it works for some people that they just post promos and stuff like that, um, then good for them. But there's really a difference between, you know, having that type of social media that feels very disconnected and having a social media page that feels like a safe place, that feels like a place where you can be open and honest and connect with other people. And again, it doesn't have to just be for service-based businesses. Product-based businesses can do that too. I've I've done that with a lot of my clients and, you know, it's worked really well so far. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're nurturing your audience and create different ways to get to know you. So you try to reach them at different touch points. Um, again, um, if you have like, let's say for example, a Facebook and an Instagram, then make sure that the stories also that you're telling on each platform are different. So for example, for me, my primary um, mediums are Facebook groups, Instagram and TikTok and on all three uh, platforms I say different things I share different things for example on TikTok I share tips on Instagram I share more more about my story and then on Facebook that's where I get to like interact with my community and just talk to them and be real with them and stuff like that um, so with each medium that you are using, with each platform that you are using, make sure that you really maximize um, how you use them and use them in different ways. And um, that way you can also have them follow you on your different platforms and, you know, it's not like they can just follow you on Facebook and they're okay na. Um, you can say, oh, oh hey, here I have like this on Instagram, I have like this on TikTok, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so make sure that you're showing different pieces of your story on different platforms. So it's super important for every single post that you do to have a call to action. This is often overlooked again. You know, it can be so easy to just look at the post and read it and be like, oh, okay, then scroll, scroll through. You have to tell them what to do after reading. Um, so what do you want them to do? Share their experience, share their favorite restaurant, share their favorite brand, um, share their favorite recipe of something. Find a way to get them into the conversation um, so that they know what to do afterwards. So again, make sure your audience, make your audience know what to do after reading your content. And again, doesn't have to be a sale. So your call, call to action doesn't mean buy this now or purchase this now. It doesn't mean that. So examples of um, calls to action that aren't just buy this now are, so if it's a long post, you can tell your audience to save now and read later. Um, and then you can say comment your experience if you relate, double tap if you agree, um, limited, limited time offer, don't miss out, remember to dot dot dot, tag a friend, um, or go from X to Y by booking now. So there are so many different ways that you can get your audience to interact, get your audience to engage with you. And it doesn't always have to be asking for a sale. I had this one client, she asked me, uh, Coach Soph, parang when I ask people to buy from me, I, I don't wanna seem too salesy. I don't wanna seem like I'm pushing for them to buy from me. But if you think about it, um, you're not doing that just because you want to sell to them. You're doing, you're asking for a sale because you think that what you offer would benefit them. Um, so make sure that you're really looking at it from that perspective when you're creating your messaging. You're not just pushing for a sale, you're also offering something that could potentially help them, that could potentially benefit them, that could potentially bring them comfort you know, again, it's about your audience. It's not just about you. So now I'm going to share with you my secret sauce to content strategy. This is something that I share in my courses. So you have 
uh, front row seat to my secret sauce right now. So this is what I like to call the SPARK formula. The SPARK formula stands for segmentation, provide value, authenticity and relatability, regular dialogue, and keep up with the convo. So this is essentially what you should be looking for when it comes to creating your content. Are you answering these questions? Are you doing these? Um, so the segmentation answers the question, who do you want to have a relationship with? Um, provide value answers the question, what value do you provide to the relationship? Authenticity and relatability answers the question, who are you and what do you mean to people? Regular dialogue answers the question, how do you maintain the relationship? And keep up with the convo answers the question, what do you stand for? So when it comes to things like these, make sure that you're really, um, again, segmentation, getting to know your audience, provide value, giving as much value as possible, authenticity and relatability, um, showcasing who your brand is, your brand values, regular dialogue, prioritizing conversations, keep up with the convo, um, what do you stand for, is there something that's happening right now in the industry or in the country that you think your brand needs to stick, take a stand on, then speak up about it, you know, showcase, it also showcases your brand's values. So make sure that when you're creating content, your content um, answers at least some of these questions. So finally, when you're creating content, you need to go through this cycle. First, understand your audience, create consistent, relatable content with calls to action, engage and converse with your community, and take note of what works best. So it's a cycle because you always have to be um, evolving. You always have to learn um, from what you're doing and what you're doing wrong. So make sure that you're really following the cycle when you're creating content. So that's it for me. If you have any questions, feel free to follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, check out my website, or you can send me an email at spark at Um But yeah, I hope this was super helpful for all of you. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to answer any of them. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of the um, National Food Fair. I hope you learn a lot from all the other speakers. I know we have a great lineup of speakers here. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening and that's it. <laughs>